Ministers from the world's biggest oil producing nations have agreed to extend oil output cuts until the end of next year. The OPEC plus alliance is facing falling prices and a potential glut in supply. Saudi Arabia has pledged a new oil cut of one million barrels per day next month. In April, OPEC Plus announced a surprise cut in oil production of about a million barrels a day. That's about 3.7 percent of global demand. The April decision pushed oil prices up about $9 a barrel, above $87. Uh, but they swiftly came back because of concerns about global economic growth. On Friday, Brent crude was trading at $76 a barrel. The IMF says Saudi Arabia needs an oil price of greater than $80 a barrel to balance its budget. Cornelia Mayer is chief executive officer at the Mayer Resources Group. She joins us now from Vienna. Were you expecting this uh, OPEC plus decision then? I was expecting some sort of a cut because OPEC is rightly, the ministers are rightly worried about the economic outlook, which is not too good. They're worried about interest rates rising still in the US and certainly in Europe. So they're worried about a weak economy, and weak economy means weak demand, which is not good for prices. How could this impact developing countries? Well, it depends. I mean, the developing countries that produce oil um, absolutely benefit from a absolutely benefit from a from a from a from a stable and, and not too low oil, oil price the ones who are importing oil for them it's 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 the worst reverse of the of the of the of the metal but we also have to look at something else which is the sector is underinvested and by 2050 we'll have two billion people more on this earth and they will mainly be in Africa and in southern Asia where we still will need oil and gas. So investment is really needed to ensure that there is sufficient energy available for those countries where that population growth is, is to happen. And that will only happen with stable oil prices. So in other words, they need to be able to stabilize the market to generate the money to invest in infrastructure that will be able to meet the needs and demands of, uh, of these developing countries yeah absolutely and they also need it for the consumers because if prices are too volatile and oscillate let's say you're an airline and the oil and oil it oscillates between 30 percent and 70 percent of your operating budget it's very hard to plan and to run your your company so both producers and consumers and investors need a certain a modicum of stability in the market isn't this really about, uh, you know, Saudi ambitions to try and transform its economy? You know, they really need, what, 80 to $100 a barrel. That's their, uh, the ideal uh, price mark in order to, to have the, the revenue to be able to invest in these very big projects. Isn't that really the priority rather than the, what we're constantly hearing about market stability? I think it is market stability because OPEC is not just Saudi Arabia. OPEC is 13 countries and OPEC plus is, is, is 10 other countries. So it's 23 countries who needed to find a compromise. The compromise was not that easy to come by because some some countries had to lower a sort of their baseline. And those were the countries that I just have over the last several years not performed up to the quota and other countries were pushed up so it's really it's really about market stability and you know when people say well country x needs this price to balance mm. the budget um, i don't have sufficient information to do that and i think it's very brave to, to 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 come up with those statements okay all right well no i was just putting it to you that this you know each Obviously, OPEC is an alliance that's made up of many different countries, and each country will have its own set of priorities yeah. and economic challenges. That was the point I was making. But I know you said the global economy is suffering, but we're not technically in a recession. Isn't this quite a bold move by OPEC in the context of that we're not actually technically in a recession? Well, we're not technically in a recession, but you know, it's the the, the growth of the growth projections of the IMF had to be revised downwards several times, and you look at the growth engine of Europe. Um, 
Germany, who is now in a technical recession, which is a little bit more than just a technical recession because it came on the base of consumption and energy transition being so expensive and people not having enough money to, to consume because they had to spend so much money on the energy costs. And um, you have to wonder, wonder where is that going to leave, lead Europe? Because over the last 30 years, it was always Germany that was the locomotive. Um, you see China that's coming out of its zero COVID with policy much slower the economy than expected so so yeah india is growing indonesia is growing but a lot of but the growth anywhere else is quite anemic all right thank you very much cornelia mayer in vienna thank you very much